Hello, doctor. How are you doing I'm today? Good. Yes, good. Now only we finished the uh, morning breakfast, chicken ah, yes. curry. Oh, that, <laughs> that's nice. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. So it, it's so nice finally to see you in person, albeit uh, digitally, but that will work for now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. So thank you very much for doing this and uh, for taking out the time to talk with me. And it, it's a pleasure to have you on. Yes, me too. I'm also waiting for this event. So <laughs> yeah. this is first. Maybe this is the first interview I am giving. Oh, okay. It, it's my pleasure to host you. So yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, if you're feeling okay, then I will begin the podcast by in uh, introducing you and introducing ISRK and myself, and then we can get right into the conversation. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're ready. So should I begin? Yes, 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 we can. Okay. So hello and welcome to the ISRK podcast. I'm your host, Mar Vikram. I'm a doctoral candidate at the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Hanyang University, Seoul, Korea. ISRK, that is Indian Students and Researchers in Korea, is a voluntary support group that works towards the benefit of the Indian diaspora in Korea. So on today's episode, I have the pleasure to be in conversation with Dr. Koshalya Velingri. Uh, Dr. Kosi is an alumni of uh, my present lab at Hanyang University, and uh, she is a research uh, uh, she's a research scientist at Larson and Tubro, uh, Chennai, India. And um, uh, after getting her PhD from Hanyang University, Korea, she uh, worked as a postdoctoral researcher at uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras. So she has a vast experience and it's a pleasure to have her on, on our podcast today. So Dr. Kosi, it's a pleasure to have you on and uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Vigran. It is a nice introduction that, uh, <laughs> yes. It's a long time after my PhD, almost four years, I'm in research area. Yes. Yes. So to begin our conversation, uh, can you contrast between the research atmosphere and temperament between India and Korea? Uh, we know that you have been involved in materials chemistry and environmental chemistry research for a long time now. So how, do th- how does the research temperament vary between these two countries? I can understand that it may be too uh, broad a question to generalize, but can you pinpoint certain aspects of it? Yes, yes. So first of all, uh, like uh, the atmosphere of a research, like a facility, so we get uh, in India and Korea almost uh, same, I guess, because I worked in high end institutions yeah, yeah. outside. But uh, uh, but I can clearly tell that uh, like professors in Korea is more transparent than uh, in India. Mm. Uh, it's not related. Uh, yes, it's not related to the professors' uh, side, but uh, the institutions also is responsible, I guess, yeah. because. In Korea, uh, professors have own freedom to do and uh, like uh, getting projects and all. But uh, in India, it's not like that. Mm. Also, facility-wise, uh, like a central facility also uh, there in both countries. But uh, in India, it is not accessible for all students. Like uh, po- as a postdoc, even in IIT, I cannot go and get uh, like a slot directly. But if, I see. in Korea, it's not like, yes, for yeah. uh, like a postdoc, so they get preference, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I think uh, this kind of a uh, thing uh, makes a barrier for an initial researcher, like uh, beginning students of a postdoc coming from uh, like well uh, high sophisticated instrument. Uh, they they already know, but in India they don't believe that you even do it. <laughs> they think that yes, yes. even they they think that uh, it is their instrument, uh, though they, though it is central facility. So. That kind of variations is there uh, in both like uh, professorship as well as uh, like that. But mentorship is almost uh, mm. same. Mm, uh, I, I guess mentorship yeah. in both uh, side yes. But in India they are like uh, making you like to, uh, instead of uh, studying they also create like uh, making you as a uh, professional ship uh, such as like a problem problem solving uh, <laughs> things they are creating yes yeah. you will learn so much of uh, problem solving skills in india it, mm. it's not there in korea because you have everything and whatever you need you will get it so uh, that time you may not uh, uh, like a uh, need of uh, thinking so much about uh, like uh, how to solve the problems yeah. so well sure. 
Th thank you very much for being so transparent and open uh, to this important discussion. And in my opinion, also, the researchers should have so a certain freedom to use the instruments and other aspects so right. that they can pursue their research in a more meaningful way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, build building upon that, how I wanted to know how did you end up coming to South Korea from India for your uh, and uh, for your PhD. And uh, so what are the positive and negative aspects of living in Korea and how severe is the language barrier? Can you share some, shed some light on that? Yes, yes. Like uh, my uh, wish to uh, go to Korea, it's not a wish uh, to go to Korea. I actually, I plan to go, go to, uh, go for my higher studies in Japan, but uh, ah. due to some, uh, yes, due to some passport issues, uh, my interview got cancelled with Tokyo University. So mm -hmm. after that, uh, uh, after that only I got invitation from South Korea. And uh, I don't that time, uh, literally, I don't have any passion to study. I ha I went for Korea to fulfill my father's dream only. But uh, once I entered there and the atmosphere and the mentorship provided by my guide uh, mm -hmm. makes me like a very good student. And as you know that um, uh, I published almost 15 articles and yes. the best this is about uh, yes. so much thing. So, but uh, the uh, what I want to say is uh, like uh, Korea is a very good country for uh, mm -hmm. researcher like uh, me, especially mm -hmm. women, because it's giving you the safety even 2 a.m., 3 a.m. You can go to lab from lab to home or home to lab. You can go freely. There is no barrier and everywhere security and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't, I never faced even a sexual harassment kind of a thing, mm -hmm. even not a talking. Yes. So I think uh, for a woman, uh, South Korea is the best. So, and the other thing is uh, the second uh, thing, what you have asked is uh, the positive points in Korea is like people are friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, I never faced a language barrier because. Um, Whenever I go, they smile on me, so I smile <laughs> at them. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, and you know that uh, they always uh, show uh, like uh, some courtesy to other mm. country people. They know that uh, uh, they are here for uh, studying or some purpose. They are living for purpose. So yes. always uh, like uh, they are very kind and uh, they they voluntarily help sometimes. Like a uh, snow times, if I fell down, also someone come and take me and uh, <laughs> live in the home. So. Korea, I don't think language is a barrier if you mm -hmm. are uh, good and kind with people, mm -hmm. I guess. Well, uh, thanks for that elaborated dis uh, discussion and explanation. And that's a very important point you touched upon. Also, we have uh, had a previous uh, female guest on our podcast, and she also touched upon this important point that she felt very safe uh, staying and working in Korea, even late night lab works, and uh, she was able to do that unlike she felt um, certain barriers back home in India. So that is, in my opinion, a very important perspective. And uh, yeah, so moving ahead, uh, why did you decide to come back to India after, your, after finishing your PhD in Korea? I wanted to know your perspective on that. And how has your uh, experience been as a postdoctoral researcher at IIT Madras? And, uh, you know, often I hear about people coming to Korea from India and they talk about the culture shock and the certain um, uh, change in the scenarios. So how about returning to India from Korea? I haven't heard uh, that perspective yet. So can you share some light on that? Yes. So first of all, I returned from Korea to India uh, due to my family situation mm. so that I have to get married. Uh, and uh, my husband also works mm -hmm. in India, so I don't want to go outside. Ah. And the other thing is that uh, that uh, cultural shock is there. Even traffic, like I, I stayed three years in Korea and yes. I never come back to India during my study time. Yeah. So three days come three years completely spent in India. Even when I come back to India, I found that why people are behaving like this because <laughs> I almost become like a... Uh, Accustomed I to that, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So like that the things is there, but in terms of working, I found a lot of difficulties. Mm -hmm. Initially, that uh, uh, initially I worked uh, like uh, in more freedom space, but uh, in India, it's not like that. Even you don't find a place to, like a proper place to sit, like a they treat uh, postdoc as uh, us as also students only, mm. even like a high end. Uh, because of uh, it's not because of that uh, mentality or something. 
there is no proper uh, mm-hmm. arrangements are there uh, for a uh, high end researchers in india that's that's the main reason it's not related to institute everywhere you can mm-hmm. find uh, uh, this they will be like uh, treating like that I but see. in korea uh, it's not like that so that uh, different uh, initial one year i faced very very much difficulty mm-hmm. and like uh, reporting with my results also because in korea you will have almost face to face discussion yeah. you were difficulties but uh, in india it's not possible you have mm. to do it and you have to finish it at the finishing only you will know that you are ro- doing wrong thing uh-huh. so that kind of a uh, difference is there in terms of uh, culture culture i guess uh, korea is i love korea more than india <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes that, that, that's the truth uh, but uh, in india it's a mother country so mm. i don't say i don't like but i prefer korea in mm. terms of like uh, yes. because of people in uh, india even from iit if i am leaving by 9 pm i don't feel safe like mm. everywhere i feel someone is uh, watching me or uh, something right. like that mm. but so that kind of a thing almost one and a half years uh, i face very much difficulties like mm. even i per- fear, get a fear to talk with uh, like uh, people mm-hmm. so that, that's the thing yes yeah well again thanks very much for sharing uh, your experience with us and uh, so i wanted to congratulate you and many congratulations on your recent appointment as a research scientist in lnt india that's a very prestigious position and a very well renowned company so big congratulations on that mm-hmm. and uh, yes yeah, so how did you end up transitioning uh, to the industrial r&d sector from academia and uh, Uh, and uh, can you share some light on the industry versus academia perspective because you know uh, many people in our discipline they always uh, continue research in the academic sector like working as a professor as a postdoc as a researcher so how does the industrial r&d sector vary from the academic sector and can you share your experience with that yes so initially i don't think the guy will move it to industry because in indian uh-huh. scenario industry is not good for a woman candidate uh-huh. so especially a married candidate mm-hmm. uh, but uh, uh, initially i have uh, sorted uh, my so, so job searching related to academic position mm-hmm. but uh, i i thought of uh, getting a uh, nit iit like uh, assistant professorship but uh, there, there is some problem with my basic degrees uh, though mm. i did in the studied in the very good universities uh, though i am a rank holder in the the uh, affiliated university so due to some like uh, this kind of a barrier and uh, all the nit iits have their own protocols mm. so we should meet that protocol anyway so yeah. and, uh, although my resumes and uh, hatch index uh, iten index is good um, there are some barrier i faced it and uh, the transition between academic and the industry uh, uh, i don't find uh, much because uh, mm-hmm. i haven't worked as a mm-hmm. professor like a teaching students and yeah. all uh, so far i have i have been actively involved almost 7.5 years in research <laughs> yes yes so i guess uh, industry is more suitable for my uh, mm-hmm. research interest as well as my like uh, characteristics or features what i have like my passion towards my future so mm-hmm. i guess industry is a better option for a candidate like me who mm-hmm. is actively involved in the research for a long time yeah so i guess yes yeah also i i think industrial sector are more uh, practical application oriented so you can implement your research findings directly on the grassroots level uh, in my opinion right. unlike the case in academic setting yeah I also I wanted to ask you like uh, what kind of research does because you are typically involved in environmental chemistry and environmental research combining with material science so what kind of research goes on in the industrial sector in this uh, research field because I don't have that much uh, information or knowledge about this so can you explain your perspective on it yes people are uh, uh, recently people are not looking for a uh, chemist they are mm-hmm. looking for material science because uh-huh. nano materials are uh, trending so yeah, you right. no need to like you, you should not have people like you are uh, always synthesizing you should mm-hmm. know applied chemistry in industrial mm-hmm. areas so applied chemistry is the key uh, to transit from the chemistry to material chemistry in industrial mm-hmm. area 
so if you are good at like uh, doing things in in terms of uh, real scale mm-hmm. like you know that graphene works well as yeah. a chemist but mm-hmm. you should know where it works that's the <laughs> industry point of view mm-hmm. so yes I, i guess so so that's the simple example that uh, transition between the material chemist as a material chemist and mm-hmm. environmental chemist yeah. because uh, i know that graphene works well also and i know that where to apply it so mm-hmm. uh, so it kind of uh, yes. so if you are having a, like a knowledge in a broad scale so you are more suitable for uh, industry and uh, recently people are focusing on uh, not more about uh, like uh, synthesizing and all because mm-hmm. people, uh, there are so many problem even yeah. now that ipcc report came so people are trying to solve about co2 yeah, and yeah. Uh, there are so much uh, waste water uh, issues in going on in india as we don't have proper segregation plan so mm-hmm. i guess uh, like if you are good at uh, solving something or if you have a patient to dedicate you to solve something industry is the best thing yeah and also industries i think focus more on the techno economic aspect because you have to right. always balance the financial aspect as well and like you pointed out in many times in nanomaterial synthesis we are using organic solvents and acids and bases right. so that is a very big issue right now in the environmental field and people right. are moving more towards uh, eco friendly synthesis so that is something very in- yes. interesting and i think in industrial setting uh, you might be getting more exposure to you know practically assimilate your knowledge into the uh, transitioning into the okay. real world application whenever they ask also they ask for you to mm-hmm. prepare something with the low cost yeah, yeah yeah yes always they quote that word low cost, low cost. <laughs> yes yes, yes. and it is good also like yeah, people will buy and use it yeah, mm-hmm. yeah because we right. can lower the cost so it is more accessible to people mm. right yeah so are you willing to share some tips with our viewers who want to um develop a career in in the industrial r&d sector because often time i get messages from people who want to transition from academic to the industrial sector so since you re- recently bagged such a prestigious position so will you be willing to share uh, certain tips on how to prepare for such industrial uh, r&d jobs and uh, how to apply for it yes uh usually in this job you don't get in uh, like advertisement and all it will mm. be come through your connections mm. so linkedin is the key yeah, to yeah. get uh, industrial related uh, jobs uh, because it is uh, like a specific it's mm-hmm. not like a recruitment as uh, it is notified in the web page or uh, some somewhere and other thing that your cv does matters because uh, in academic positions we will uh, just pinpoint always uh, that uh, we do this 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 and that yes. so industry people not interested that like a field work what you have done mm-hmm. and what is your ability in terms of uh, problem solving though you have uh, though they have created some product and it like finally ends up a bad position so though <laughs> but you but how you will uh, like uh, solve that problem and uh, to prepare other material or mm-hmm. some modifying it those kind of things that they are uh, thinking and the other one i have noticed uh, uh, in my thing that in industrial skills you should be like uh, very good at analytical skills like mm. you should know at least to five instrument uh, uh, to operate independently so mm. to preparing cvs uh, that uh, that kind of uh, like industrial jobs people should highlight what are the instrument they can mm. use it on hand on and uh, what are the things they need uh, support Mm. like that and uh, modeling part uh, is uh, now trending in industry mm. side modeling and simulation you know some modeling uh, activities right right mm. they they are looking for a candidate because they don't want to waste uh, money to trial mm. and error mm. so they they are uh, thinking of uh, developing or uh, recruiting people uh, who knows like a uh, modeling java and python like something like that yes so if you ya- have that one you add it in your cv and mm. highlight it and they are uh, they are like uh, it is not related to you studied or came from uh, iit or in foreign university <laughs> it's uh, solely related to your own own like your uh, skills own and research yeah. as well as the own dedication what you have done mm-hmm. right right so i don't think that uh, you need to be show show it up but you should know how to sell yourself in mm-hmm. this <laughs> yes. yes yeah should, yes Right. Yes. So you you touched upon certain uh, interesting aspects that it seems that industrial sector is more 
practical oriented and wants to have people with more practical sets of skills rather than more uh, academic like skills so uh, can you can you also elaborate on that like uh, for example we see often advertisements from universities for professorship positions and assistant professors and that sort of positions so they frequently ask that uh, the candidate must have some independent research experience after their phd as a post doc or research professor whatever so is there any that kind of requirement for industrial sector or it's purely based on your talent skills and uh, your expertise yes in my uh, opinion uh, unlike academic industries relies on your skills Mm-hmm. that's the first point and uh, depending on the like a uh, grade where you are fixing or where you are trying job it depends mm-hmm. like a uh, research uh, scientist they have uh, in like well known institute uh, industries like lnt they have a gra- uh, grade where you have to meet that much of experience mm-hmm. so it's not related to independent research actually mm-hmm. so whatever research activities even if you are doing in academic for yeah. more than 4 years mm-hmm. along with your uh, like a uh, coursework and all they will take you They, yeah. they 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 only need to uh, know that you have to do certain like a uh, recent research mm. so that's their goal yes because they are updating every day mm. it's not like uh, yes it's <laughs> not like uh, even activated carbon people are uh, synthesizing and trying it in academia but uh, in industry it's not the case so mm. they are updating almost every day so you should uh, know the recent activities uh, it doesn't mean that you have to do it uh, independent research or you have to have some own funding mm-hmm. it's not re- like that but you should be in touch there should mm-hmm. not be a gap or uh, for any anything even for a woman candidate they don't prefer maternity leave because mm. they tell that even maternity you can read something so <laughs> yes uh, it, yes that's what they asked me also <laughs> so they they don't think that uh, maternity is a problem mm-hmm. yes they don't disappoint you actually it's not like they are pushing you mm-hmm. they are telling that you are having a talent and uh, you can it at least read something at uh, those time even mm-hmm. though you didn't implement so what i want to tell uh, finally that um, you have to be updated mm. update yourself everything everywhere the, so, that's the needed mm-hmm. so what are your recommendations for bridging that academic and industrial gap research gap like you touched upon very important point that several times researchers keep on using materials which may not have practical applications anymore in the field like you touched upon activated carbon and i'm intrigued by that so i want to know um, more the story of activated carbon and how can researchers and students and um, even like doctoral students can bridge that knowledge gap between industry and um, academic research that is going on what are your recommendations for it yes uh for example uh, that uh, activated carbon mm-hmm. everyone know that it does up good for everything yeah, but yeah. Uh, people what people are trying to do is uh, like uh, they are repeating the same thing mm-hmm. so with the different uh, like uh, pollutants mm-hmm. so it is re- actually not needed to mm-hmm. do that much of uh, intensive research on that instead of that they can take one small problem in a small village and uh, they can even mm-hmm. build uh, uh, with uh, some pilot unit uh, which can Uh, treat almost a thousand meter cube of water per That's day right. at least yes so they can uh, do it for that and they can even pattern it indian mm-hmm. patents are welcoming for small scale that one and they have a smart funding also dsc now announced the smart funding for mm-hmm. the small scale so those kind of uh, things even uh, in my opinion uh, high end institutions also not uh, uh, doing it because mm. they are in uh, uh, their own research interest as well as their own uh, like uh, positions what they are yeah. doing like uh, mm. the phd research only focus on phd thesis <laughs> and researcher only focus mm. on their uh, like yeah. annual report <laughs> so i i never yeah. found but in korea it's not like uh, vigran Uh, mm-hmm. as you know that in our own lab also whatever we succeed that mm-hmm. we will try to make a product That's but right. um, it's not yes and uh, there is a continuation like uh, if one researcher is doing something the other pro, like a phd student will at least do something uh, like a more uh, some yeah. branch of it but mm-hmm. in india it's not like in india it's like a independent research people are doing mm-hmm. so there is no research continuity but in mm-hmm. industries it's not like that so if i am a research scientist and if i am leaving and again some person is coming they are, they have to do the branch of it yeah yeah so in industry side 
it's an important thing so academy also should like mm-hmm. uh, do some kind of a practice in continuation of research because yeah. it is important to end up something instead of move on with one thing yeah i also think that the end goal of any research is the practical application so we should always try to think in that direction and try to scale up our product so that it can eventually reach into the market that's right and um, recently our lab has also been collaborating with some industrial partners to like scale up the uh, filters and other devices that we have been developing at the lab so we are trying to upscale that as well so hopefully if like, like you said like the doctoral students who enter the area they will see what research is going on and then they will try to push in that direction to hopefully eventually re- reach a practical set point so yeah that's a very important aspect right so we are uh, re- reaching the 30 minute marks of our podcast session so uh, do you have any closing words or any um, final words you would like to say to our audience before we switch up yes uh i just want to say is uh, people say that women in career mm-hmm. is difficult i i personally feel that women in science science is more difficult yeah. than other yeah, yeah. field because yes because uh, finding a job uh, like as a woman after marriage life is not a easy job mm-hmm. in anywhere even korea or india but uh, my uh, kind uh, recommendation as well as we see uh, like a uh, people who are in passionate about the research or academia they should continue it's mm. not related to their boundaries uh, like it, they are not getting uh, the job what they want or something they should at least do something for a society in terms of uh, writing at least writing mm. a report and posting it is something so i don't uh, like uh, recommend a woman be a woman always mm-hmm. women mm-hmm. should be a scientist somewhere so yes. that's my wish yes for all women yeah even even recently the global research community has been focusing more and more on women in science um ag- agencies such as american chemical society is particularly and nowadays even elsewhere and royal society of chemistry are highlighting more and more women in science so so as to push the boundaries and to bring forth the equity in the research atmosphere and also nowadays uh, several women in science are leading the journals as well um a famous right. famous scientist was uh, nominated editor in chief of the new cell uh, cell catalysis journal so that is something remarkable and hopefully we can continue to push in that directions and with the guidance and support of scientists like you hopefully we can bridge that gap eventually and uh, hopefully everyone can prosper together yeah yes vikram i hope so yeah, it yeah, should be right. it is mm-hmm. needed for india mm-hmm. yes so it, it yes. was a, a fun talk and very informative to talk with you and uh, given your vast experience it was hopefully our viewers can also get a uh, lots of insight through your uh, through through this talk and uh, thank you very much for taking out the time to talk with me and um, mm-hmm. have a have a nice day and uh, hopefully we'll stay in touch and maybe i can get you on the podcast eventually in the future as well to discuss some more things yes yes vikram you are welcome and mm-hmm. thanks for the opportunity yes thank you very much for your time doctor and uh, take care see you yes see you see you vikram take care thank you very much for listening to the podcast uh, Tune in to the ISRK YouTube channel for more videos. Uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you.